It was a startling moment in the ongoing regional tensions when the Houthi launched what they called the Palestine II missile, a hypersonic ballistic weapon reportedly capable of reaching speeds as high as Mach 16. At such blistering velocity, the missile was able to travel from Yemen to Israel in mere minutes, giving Israeli and allied defense systems very little time to react. What made this strike even more concerning was the missile's apparent ability to change course mid-flight, a capability likely achieved through a sophisticated skip-gliding mechanism. This means that rather than following a traditional predictable arc, the missile could bounce along the edge of the atmosphere, shifting its trajectory in a way that complicates interception. Experts believe the missile wasn't purely hypersonic in the conventional sense, but had characteristics of what some call a semi-hypersonic design. This would still allow for sharp maneuvers during flight, far beyond what older ballistic models could manage. These kinds of mid-air changes wreak havoc on systems like Israel's Aero 3 and the US-developed THAAD, which are built to predict and intercept based on expected flight paths. Additionally, there's speculation that the missile may have taken a lower-than-usual flight route, potentially slipping under the radar coverage that usually defends against high-altitude threats. This is the Houthi Palestine II. It was used for the first time based on Iran's advanced missile systems. Inside this missile is a hypersonic glide vehicle, which detaches and allows the missile to maneuver and glide at speeds between Mach 5 and 16. The missile has a range of around 1,500 kilometers, only slightly more than its predecessor, the Palestine I missile or FATA-1. What sets it apart from other ballistic missiles is its ability to accelerate outside the Earth's atmosphere, while its aerodynamic control surfaces enable steering to evades the famous Aero missile's defense system made by Israel. The combination of extreme speed, sudden course changes, and possible stealth capabilities revealed a major vulnerability, even in one of the most heavily defended airspaces in the world. What this incident really drives home is that non-state actors are now gaining access to highly advanced weaponry that was once thought to be the domain of major powers. Yemen Houthi militant possessing a hypersonic missile represents a significant threat to both Israel and the United States Navy ships. To understand how the Houthi hypersonic missile works, we need to examine the functioning of Iran's missile technology and Israel's aero defense system. Let's study how the Houthi follows the same strategy as Iran when it hit Israel with almost 180 number ballistic missiles. These missiles traveled more than 1,000 miles from this valley to reach Israel's most populated city and military sites. Iran used variants of the Shahab-3 ballistic missile in its latest attack on Israel. The Shahab-3 is the foundation for all of Iran's medium-range ballistic missiles and uses liquid propellant. It can carry a warhead weighing between 760 and 1,200 kilograms, which translates to 1,675 and 2,645 pounds. How it works. Step 1. The missile is positioned at a 90-degree angle and then fired. Step 2. The ballistic missile's trajectory takes it outside or near the edge of Earth's atmosphere. Step 3. The warhead payload separates from the rocket that carried it aloft and re-enters the atmosphere, descending towards its target. Step 4. The missile can carry a single or multiple warheads, depending on the variant. The warhead separates from the single-stage rocket after it has traveled about more than half the distance to its target. The most prolific Scud variants had a circular error probable of 300 to 450 meters. This means that 50% of the missiles fired at target would land within a circle of that diameter. As you watch this, data brokers may be collecting and selling your personal information, your home address, phone number, online searches, and even financial details. This data doesn't just result in spam calls and scam attempts. It can also affect your personal credit score as scammers may manipulate your data, potentially leading to a loan denial. That's where Incogni comes in to protect your privacy. The service scans the web for exposed data, sends automated removal requests, and continuously follows up to ensure your information stays deleted. It also performs regular scans to prevent data brokers from sneaking your information back into circulation all while providing you with a clear, real-time dashboard to track your data. So take your personal data back with Incogni, use code AITELLY with the link below incogni.com slash AITELLY and get 60% off on an annual plan. Now let's take a look how the Israeli defense system works. The Israeli defense system consists of three tiers. First up is the long-range aero-missile defense system. 
which was designed specifically with Iranian missiles in mind. Each of these system rockets costs a few million dollars, and they can intercept missiles outside the Earth's atmosphere, resulting in enhanced protection. The second layer of defense is the so-called David Sling system, designed for taking out missiles and drones. Finally, the Iron Dome stops most short-range rocket attacks in Israel. Let's take a look at why the Iron Dome failed to intercept the Iranian ballistic missiles. Apart from discussing the multi-layered missile defense system, the Iron Dome itself has a range of around 40 miles, while the David Sling can intercept ballistic missiles up to a range of 180 miles. The top-tier Aero anti-ballistic missile systems can target threats up to 1,500 miles away. According to reports, 180 ballistic missiles, which are possibly hypersonic as claimed by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, were launched. Although the Aero missile defense system successfully intercepted many missiles before they reached Israel, many still got through. The main problem behind the failure to intercept was after the detachment of the glide vehicle from the launcher. The glide vehicle can change its trajectory multiple times, which confused the Aero missiles. This maneuver also bypassed the David Sling and finally the Iron Dome system, which is not designed to counter hypersonic missiles like the FATA-2 model. As a result, the interceptor missed for targets and the glide vehicle landed on military bases where the $100 million F-35 jets were stationed. Let's examine the cost implications of a single day of missile attacks. Iran expended over $200 million by launching ballistic missiles along with drones, whereas the IDF spent $1 billion to defend itself. This includes the Aero missile, which costs around $2.5 million. The David Sling costs around $1 million to produce, while the Iron Dome costs around $20,000 to $100,000 for a single missile, depending on inflation. By contrast, Iranian ballistic missiles cost around $200,000 each, and its drones only $20,000 to $50,000 each. The Aero Missile Defense System consists of three basic parts, the Missile Launcher Unit, the Green Pine Radar Antenna, and the Aero Missile. The Missile Launcher Unit is composed of six Erector Launcher tubes housing ready-to-fire missiles. Positioned at the rear of a two-axle trailer, each launcher, when fully loaded with six launch tubes carrying ready-to-fire missiles, weighs 35 tons. The Green Pine Radar serves as the warning and fire control radar for the Aero 3 anti-ballistic air defense missile system. It plays a crucial role in target detection and guidance. The Aero operates as a two-stage missile. Let's look inside this engineering technology. This is the solid propellant booster and sustainer rocket motors. At the rocket's peak sits the ignition chamber, triggering the combustion of the solid propellant when activated. This propellant isn't just any substance, it's a meticulously crafted blend of fuel and oxidizer poured into a casing and then cured. Encasing this blend is a protective shell called the motor case. At the core of the rocket lies the propellant burning zone. Here, the solid fuel and oxidizer react, producing incredibly high temperature combustion gases, which helps to launch the rocket at incredible speed above the Earth's surface. Moving further to the front, the most important part of the missile is the kill vehicle, which can be divided into three basic parts. The second stage is the propulsion system with a thrust vectoring nozzle. Just above it is the warhead, a directed high explosive fragmentation weighing 150 kilograms, which translates to 330 pounds. The third stage is the seeker, capable of pivoting itself to track its target. But what's the big deal about this long-range anti-ballistic missile system? Let's start with a propulsion system the famous THAAD, Terminal High Altitude Area Defense uses a divert attitude control thrusters. In comparison to the Aero 3 kill vehicle, which utilizes a thrust vectoring nozzle with a solid fuel rocket, it has a shorter and more limited burn time. It has a few advantages, one of them being the ability to compensate for a lack of radar accuracy. When the radar sends the interceptor to an inaccurate target location, the Aero 3 kill vehicle can adjust its trajectory. Since intercontinental ballistic missiles travel at very high speeds, the kill vehicle must change its trajectory based on newer, more accurate radar data from its seeker. A failure to fully divert the course to the new target would result in a failure to intercept. We make original 4K 3D animation with a small team of animators, so please support us by subscribing and dropping in a comment for more exclusive engineering animations made just for you guys.